Good afternoon, everyone. This is the relearning for different types of forces. Um, this sheet should look like a sheet we did in class together. Um, but I'm just going to, I spaced it out a little bit differently and there'll be some additional practices. Um, again, this is something that we did a, quite a bit of, but it is uh, complicated, so um, it's not unusual for people to need some additional practice. So I'd like to go through just each force and talk about what it is, which direction is it pushing or pulling, and when is, when is it going to be there. So let's first start with gravity, which we abbreviate as F with little g. Um, for now, we're going to use a um, sort of general description of gravity, which is Earth pull on an object. And when we actually study gravity, we'll learn it's something slightly different than that, but for now, this is the definition we'll work with. What direction does it pull? It pulls down, and it's always present. Again, these are things you just need to remember. Support or normal force will abbreviate F little s. The definition is literally the support force, the force that holds up an object. Which direction does it push or pull? It pushes or pulls up, opposite of gravity. And when is it present? When an object is on a surface. So whether that surface is the floor or that surface is a table, there's support force. The applied force is F little a. Definition is, I'm going to just call it a push or a pull. I understand that these are also pushes and pulls, pull or push. But this would be something that's external to the object. It can act in any direction. And when is it present? It's present when another object push, pushes or pulls. Again, that's not a perfect definition, uh, but if a person is pushing or pulling or something like that, uh, that would be it. Friction, F, little f, um, the force of two, excuse me, objects uh, rubbing against each other. Sorry, I ran out of my box here. Which direction does it uh, push or pull? It acts opposite motion. Okay, so if it's the object is moving to the right, friction is going to push to the left. When it is at present, um, there has to be motion, and it has to be the object is on a surface. Okay? Or next to a surface. Let's say next to a surface, sorry. Okay? Air friction is a specific type. We're going to call it F air. I know with some of you we just called it friction in general, but we're going to call it um, air friction specifically. Um, this is the force of 
air hitting the object. Okay. Same thing like friction, it's this is just a specific type of friction. Opposite motion is when air friction is acting. Um, when is it present? When the object is moving very fast. So when it's flying or falling, uh, something can be moving that fast. Uh, there are other times when air friction is present, but um, I think it's uh, the we're going to ignore it unless the object is moving very fast. So that's a change from our notes before. Ft is the force along a rope or wire. Which direction does it push or pull along the rope or wire? Again, these are just general things. It could um, be on a backpack strap or something like that, but that's sort of just a general idea. When is it present? When there is a rope or wire. Now that's sort of general, um, but I will say that um, it's not, it has to be, there has to be a force along that rope or wire. Um, there can't just be like, like in our lab we're doing, there's a lot of wires, but there's not tension. We're not pulling on the wires to make the cart move. Um, a force causing, the force causing an object to move might be, um, uh, different than the net force. So an example might be, it would be something that gets it started. Um, so if I pushed a table, uh, a table, but the friction is acting opposite. Sorry, I missed the letter there. This is going to be the net, the direction of the net force, and so it's going to slow down once I let it go. But this is what's responsible for the motion. It's going to, so if I, if I push a table in this room right now, uh, my push will be what's responsible for the motion, but once it leaves me, the net force is going to be in the direction of friction. And so it can be, the force causing the object to move could be different than the net force. And the net force in that case would be the direction of friction. Now, that's different than in number two, the force that is causing the acceleration has to be the same as the direction of the net force. The example would be friction is causing the table to slow. Okay. Number three, unbalanced forces or unequal forces cause acceleration. And number four, if the forces are equal, the speed will be constant or unchanging, which might mean the object is not moving. We're going to go ahead and flip to the back. I'm going to pause really quickly. So we're going to just do a few practice problems. Once you're done watching the video, you need to do these practice on your own. Um, I'll check them to make sure that you know what you're doing, and then um, you can take the retest. So we're going to do a free body diagram. Draw the box. Skydiver is falling out of the plane. Draw a free body diagram for the forces once the parachute has been opened. All right, so we're going to draw gravity. Oh, sorry, I gotta go through my steps. So, 
First step, check each of the forces. Gravity. Yep, there's gravity. Because there's always gravity. Sorry, that's a really bad FD. Second, is there a support force? Well, is the object on a surface? No, the thing's falling, the person's falling. Is there an applied force? Is something pushing or pulling? Is some other object pushing or pulling the, ob the person? Um, I would say no. That's a little bit of a gray area, but no. Friction, are two objects running, rubbing against each other? No. Air friction is the force of the air hitting the object. Um, or is there tension? So I'm gonna accept, I would accept either of these. Say that you say now once the, this is from the parachute hitting the air. Or again, force of gravity and then the t uh, there could be tension if you included, that's a T, sorry. Um, if you included the ropes or the wires, cords on the parachute, okay? So it doesn't say anything about speed, so we can't tell, but we can assume that they've slowed. So we're gonna make sure that our arrows are drawn equal lengths. The cart is moving across the track at a constant, unchanging speed. So this tells us that the forces are balanced. Um, and we're talking about the carts like in our lab. So we're going to go ahead and draw our box. And we're going to go through. Is there gravity? Well, there's always gravity. So I'm going to do FG. Is there support force? Support, there is support force when the object is on a surface. So the cart is on the track, so we're going to write there's support force. Is something pushing or pulling the cart? Uh, it doesn't say, so we're going to leave it off. Is there friction? There is motion. And the object is next to the surface. Um, so there has to be some friction. Is there air friction? Is it moving very fast? It doesn't say it's moving very fast, so we're going to ignore that. Is there tension? There is no rope or wire. Now going back to our balanced forces, because the forces are balanced, there has to be, oh sorry, those should be the same size. I'm really bad at drawing arrows of the same size. There has to be some applied force. So even though we don't know that there is someone pushing or pulling this cart, we do know because there is friction that there has to be an applied force. Okay, so you gotta double check, do I have balanced forces? Last but not least, motorcycle is speeding up as it was driving away from the stoplight. Stoplight, gravity. Oh, this speeding up thing's really important. That means that they're unbalanced. It's accelerating. There's always gravity, so we'll start by doing that. Is there the, is the object on a surface? Yes, the motorcycle's on the ground. Is there an applied force? Then the, another object pushes or pulls. Uh, oh crap, that's a bad definition. So there is applied force from the motor within that. So let's adjust this. Sorry if you're running pen. I was trying to make it a great definition. When there is a push or pull. Okay, so there's a push or pull, it's supplied by the motor. And there's going to be some friction because there's surfaces rubbing against each other, but we got to have it speeding up. So what I'm going to suggest doing is I'm going to increase the length of the applied force. All right, I need you to try these four problems, eight through 11 yourself. Please bring them in to me and I will check them. We'll talk about them and please let me know if you need additional help. Thanks very much and have a great day.